This is it. We're live. We're live. Woohoo! Oh, we wow. did it. Hopefully this works. So this is our first time ever doing a Facebook Live video. Something we've been kind of kicking around for an, a, a while, figuring out, you know, what we want to do, what we want to talk about, best way to reach people. And we kind of came up with the idea that we want to do these Facebook Live videos to provide information to people that we commonly see. Um, so this is more of just kind of like an education tool for everybody. Uh, so we get a lot, we see a lot of the same things over and over again. And today the topic we chose is seven things you're probably doing wrong with your insurance. So our list was much longer than seven. Oh yeah. <laughs> we get calls all the time. People ask us questions and we just think, gee, these are pretty common questions and that we should be able to answer them in for everyone. So these are common questions we always get from different people and um, you may be thinking about the same asking the same questions and you just don't ask them so hopefully we'll be able to provide you answers before you even ask the questions that's right so we cut it down to seven these are the ones that we felt were probably the most important and the ones that we see the most often for people um, so this is the first time for us like I said doing this Facebook live video hopefully the video is recorded and we see it on our end <laughs> hopefully the audio is okay for you guys on your end uh, it's always horrible when you're trying to listen to a video, but the audio is so soft. Yeah. But uh, let us know how we're doing uh, in the comments. You know, tell us, hey, everything's great, good job. Uh, any feedback, any Anything. future topics that you might want to hear from yeah. us, let us know. For sure. We have a long list that we want to go through, but if there's anything that people are pressing for, uh, we can definitely either add that to our list or move it higher on the priority yep. for our list. Yep. So sure. we have no set time frame to see when our next video will be <laughs> or if there will be a next video. Uh, but this is a starting point. We figure we start with one yep. and, and go and go from there. So, so like I said, today we're doing seven things you're probably doing wrong with your insurance. This list is in no particular order. So I think we're just gonna kind of jump right in because we don't want this to be a super long video right, for people. We right. don't want this to be a 30 minute thing. Yeah, we don't want you guys to get bored with us real fast. Ex exactly. So why don't you jump in, Mary, and you got the first one here. I gave my glasses on. <laughs> you know how it gets when you can't see whatever. Um, my gosh, not insuring your home and your auto together in one with together with the same company. That is a very common misconception that people have here. Um, first of all, money. Um, you save a quite a bit of money. You can save between 10 and 20 percent on both policies if you put them together. It can be called bundling or um, a multi-policy discount. Those are different kinds of wording or terms that they're, they're used. Um, that's the one thing. Uh, it's convenient. So when you go to pay your policies or manage your policies, um, or when you call us, you can call one agent and we're going to be able to um, provide you with other incentives and different ways of um, managing your policies. Um, and also we can provide you gaps or we can see if there's going to be any kind of gaps in your coverage at the same time. So that's something else to think about. So you're going to be calling just one person with this because you're insuring both policies together. Yeah, you, we, we get a broader picture of everything. So if you have your auto with us, your home with another agency, and then your boat with somebody else, yeah. with a company direct, and then you call us and you say, Marianne, I want an umbrella policy. We don't know what else you have out there. So that's why it's important to have it all kind of under one roof. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the other easy thing is when you go into one with one company, you just remember the passwords and logins for one company. So if you want to make a change or look up your policies or whatever, just go into one company and and you get the same logins. Again, if you're anything like me, I always forget my passwords. I always have to log them in and <laughs> run them down somewhere. And they're getting the lists are always getting longer and longer and longer. So that's the other thing. Um, the other thing is stability. Um, I know that there's different times when uh, you could. Uh, it, it basically shows shows loyalty to the um, insurance company. So if it's something like um, you get a string of bad luck and um, a couple accidents, whatever, and the underwriter is going to give us a call and say, "Hey, what's going on with this particular cost of a client?" And we can always say, well, you know, if they just going through some bad luck, like we always, some people do, uh, you, but do you realize that we also have their home and we also have their umbrella policy with, with, uh, with you? And the underwriters are going to look at that and understand that there's a lot of loyalty there and, and stability that you can stay with the same company and they will just look aside for your string of bad luck and just renew your policy and move on. 
So those are just a couple of features that, a couple of ideas that um, for you guys to think about by keeping your home and your owner together. And I tell you uh, what, this seems so simple, right? <laughs> it does. The majority of people are like, I already, I already do this. We see, we see it so often yeah. that it's not done. Yeah. That that's yeah. really why it's kind of at the top of our list. Yeah. So you, you know, if you follow our Facebook page, you see our our savings photos. And we had we save people a lot oh, of money, yes, yes. you know, and so and we do it frequently. So I mean, we try to get at least four of those photos a, a, a month. We really save a lot more people that throughout the month. But a lot of times, those savings photos are just done, or, or people are saving them because we're doing these simple things for yes, them. Yes, yes, you know, yes, yes, and that's one of the simple things right there is just combining bundling. Uh, and giving them off pile plus discount. Remember, that goes on both policies too. Again, it's not just you know on your home or just on your auto. It's both. So that's 10%, 20% on both policies. So something to think about. So number two. This is yours. This is mine. Husband and wife having separate auto policies. So this is something. Same. It seems simple, but things happen. You you get married. There's a lot going on. You're moving in together. You're changing names. You're changing addresses. You're doing all these different things. And one of those things that a lot of people, I see a lot of people just keep for convenience fact sake is just two separate policies. They say, oh, we'll, we'll get to it later. You know, uh, we'll, we'll combine those later. They, it's not something they do right away, um, which is fine. But sometimes later turns into years down the road yeah. <laughs> until they need to make a change on something. Um, so I just, I mean, there's a huge savings for it. Yeah. I mean, it, yeah. You you put two vehicles on the same policy, it's a, a, about a 30% discount per vehicle for having that multi-car discount. So that is gigantic. So I mean, just recently, I had someone calling me up and they wanted homeowner's insurance. They're buying a house. Uh, and I said, okay, great. So I was going to go with step one. With Marianne said, I wanted to combine their home and auto policies with the same company. So I said, where's your auto insurance? He says, okay, I have my auto insurance with this company, but my wife has this, her auto insurance with the same company, but it's still a separate policy. Um, so they weren't on the same policy, not getting that discount. So when I quoted them, I combined their auto policy I saved them enough on their auto policy that it paid for their homeowner's insurance and some more. So they got two policies for the cost of what they were just paying okay. before. Yeah. So that's that's just a huge savings. Again, it's one of those things that seems simple to do, but sometimes things just slip through the cracks. You know, sometimes people just say, well, I like, you know, having my finances separate. I pay for my auto insurance, my husband pays for his auto insurance. People just like to do that. I just tell people, Combine them and divide it, it up. up. Yeah. You know, it's just yeah. easy. You're just saving that money. I mean, that's a lot of money that's just left on the table. Yeah. And I know, hey, you know, six, seven hundred dollars savings, that's a lot of money. money. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. Okay, and just to pit piggyback back on that one, it's almost like not listing your spouse on your homeowner's policy. So this is number three. This is number three, or your auto policy as well. So there's 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 a a, a little uh, a little difference here. But again, first of all, we just talked about that you both bought your home policy. You're not listing your spouse on your homeowner's policy. Um, number one, you could be considered a named insured. Named insured is who's ever listed on the policy declaration page. Um, again, a lot of times people go back to think about um, is your name on the deed or not on the deed. Even if your name is not on the deed, you still can add your spouse to your homeowner's policy. Um, number one, main reason why you'd want to add is so that you can make changes. So if it's just the husband's name on the policy and the wife calls us, we cannot make a change on their homeowner's policy because she's not listed as a named insured. Simple things like that, very simple. Putting in a claim, same thing like that. If you wanted information regarding a current claim, adjuster's not going to be able to talk to you because your name's not listed on the that page you're on the insurance. And we so. had an issue with a claim um, for this situation. Oh, exactly. Yeah. A perfect example on that was um, she was a single girl and uh, she she went and bought a house on her own, which is great. And then all of a sudden she, she got married, which is great, but she did never added her husband onto her homeowner's policy. So they were married for a few years and they unfortunately, bad things, luck happens and they separated and she moved out of the house. So again, go back, the homeowner's insurance that she purchased on herself with only her name on that policy and then she moved out 
and there was a claim. So the husband called in because he was residing in the house, and they denied that claim because, number one, she wasn't living in the household. Right. The named insured was, was not, not living, living in, in the, the household. household. And number two, he wasn't listed on the policy. So yeah. if she would have listed him on the policy when they very first got married, he would be considered a named insured, and they would have been able to cover the claim at that point as well, because he would have been a named insured residing in the household. Because right. then it wouldn't matter if she had moved out, because he would have been the named insured living there. But since yep. the named insured moved out, was no longer residing in the home, that's when yep. that issue came up. Yeah, and, and that happened just recently with our in our agency, and they were, he was not very happy. But again, he was not listed on the policy. So that's one of the biggest reasons to, for at least your homeowners on that case. Um, regarding your auto, not listing your spouse, um, I, I mean, I'm married, so my husband drives my car. If he's got to run to the store, my car is the car, you know, the last in line to come in, come in the driveway, he's going to drive it. So people say that my husband never drives your car. There's access. You, as long as he has access to your car, you never know. He's going to take the car and go around the block or go to the neighbors or, or whatever. He's got access to your car and they're going to drive it. Or fill up for you. Right? You or go. take it to the car wash. I'll do that to my go. wife every now and then. I'll take it to the car wash. I'll fill it up with gas. And, you know. There you go. Again, so um, th those are just little, little things that happen. So if he's not listed or she is not listed on your policy, um, the insurance company could deny that claim because they're not listed on the policy. Or they could refuse to pay the claim. Um, yeah, but can't you let anybody drive your car? You can. You can let anybody drive your car. But again, when it comes back down to your spouse living in the household with you, they have to be added to that that, right. that policy it's it's in your best interest because well as like, we're seeing those questions being asked oh yeah by the yeah. companies oh now. yeah 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 you know so they're asking us how many residents live in your household yep all right so we have to answer that so again when they say how many residents and you're married hmm. so if you're married where's your significant other they got to be listed on the policy so a couple of things is um if you did have an accident again besides insurance company refusing to pay the claim um, they may backdate um, the policy and may make you pay backdated premium even um, to cover the cost of your significant other being on the policy uh, and or they may not renew you or terminate your policy altogether because that is considered fraud, insurance fraud. Um, so maybe the remember. person doesn't have a great record. Husband right. or spouse, and so yeah. maybe they don't you don't qualify any longer for the company you're with. Right. You know, based on their record, so you really need to find a policy that they both qualify, qualify for. for. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, and the other thing is, sometimes people that they don't want their their significant other others listed, but we can still list them as a non-driver. They're still going to be listed on the policy, so they're actually part of the policy. So if they did take your car or whatever, that once or twice to the store, give it give it a nice wash, cleaning, um, they would be covered at that point, and um, they'll be listed as a non-driver on the policy. So we can actually do that as well, too. And then we keep that, keep the premium, one of the ways to keep the premium down as well. Yeah, because sometimes they might have, like, a company car that they drive. Yep, yeah. You yeah, know? Yep, you're right, yep, you're right. So. so, all right. So number four, your deductible is too low. <laughs> <laughs> now, we see this typically kind of older policies. Mm -hmm. Someone hasn't reviewed their policy in a long time. You might be carrying a $250 deductible on your homeowners, which is really low. Yeah. Uh, and same thing on probably your auto and your collision as well. I've seen some on the auto as low as $50 That's for comprehensive and $100 for collision. collision. The base rate for insurance companies is a $500 deductible. So at that rate, with that deductible, you're getting their base rate. If you have a lower deductible, so a 250 on $250 deductible, you're essentially paying a surcharge on your insurance for it. You're paying more. Now, if you take a higher deductible, instead of 500, you take a thousand, you're gonna you actually get like a credit off the rate, so you're gonna pay less. Um, so we recommend that people carry the higher deductibles because you really don't want to be using your insurance for what we consider minor claims because right. um, that can create issues for you. So kind of our rule of thumb in our office is your, your claim needs to be kind of double your deductible to make it worthwhile for you to put in right. a, a right. claim on, on the insurance. Yeah. Um, because insurance companies not only look at the severity of claims on whether to keep you, but they also look at the frequency, frequency. 
That's you know, the big thing is the frequency of the claims. People like to put in a little, lot of little small claims. That's just not good. Right. That's and worse. It, it <laughs> makes, and, and I tell you what, insurance companies are really clamping down on how many uh, how many claims they'll accept for new business. Most companies now, it's just one. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. uh, Before it used to be two. That was pretty liberal. Mm -hmm. Now they've changed that and they've scaled it down just the one. Mm -hmm. And on that's usually go back, they go back five years on these now too. I mean, the old saying was always three years and now it's five years. So yes. insurance companies are really coming down harder on that too for being five years. Yeah, they're looking the back, back at a longer, longer period, period of time, time and fewer claims. Fire. Um, so that's what we said because I had a I had a, a, a case where it was a friend of mine had a had a had a minor what we consider kind of a minor claim he had a place that blow down in his backyard um, and he had a thousand dollar deductible so he did carry a higher deductible uh, but the total claim was like sixteen seventeen hundred dollars so he got six or seven hundred bucks for it which I mean like we said that's a lot of money you know but the problem is two years later he had a bigger claim to put in on his homeowners. So he had some ice damming uh, and it was creating an issue with the exterior of his house where some masonry work actually had to be taken out and the walls needed to be kind of finished mm -hmm. and all that stuff needed to kind of be put mm -hmm. back on. Mm -hmm. So that was more like a three to four thousand dollar claim. That's one that he probably would, would want to typically put in because that's right. double your deductible. Yeah. It's a pretty severe claim, uh, you know, for it. Yeah. Um, but we made the recommendation that he not put it in and he didn't want to put it in because then he would have two claims in less than two, two years. years. So he got five or 600 bucks on the first claim, but he ended up having to pay more out of pocket uh, yeah. on his second claim. Um, so unfortunately, you know, uh, you know, he had to pay that more expensive claim and really it's kind of the best advice for him because if he didn't pay that claim, he'd have two claims. Nice. The insurance company is worth, could possibly non-renew them for frequency, even though there are two essentially minor claims. I mean, I've had someone who had an $800,000 homeowner's claim, uh, but the insurance company kept them because that's the only claim that they had. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. And that's what insurance is for, those severe claims. And that's what they're there for. Yeah. Your insurance is not a maintenance program. Right. Uh, so we always kind of stress that to people. It's kind of those things, welcome to the joys of home ownership. Oh, <laughs> 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 this is what we kind of tell people, unfortunately. So uh, it's funny, just today in the office, Andrew was having a little bit of an issue and me and Red just got up and left and go, yep, Andrea, welcome to homeownership because yeah. that's what it's all about. <laughs> yep. You got it. So that's, you know, our recommendation is carry those higher deductibles and be careful uh, of what type of claims you put in. And that's what we're here for, by the way. I mean, give us a call. If, if you really want to discuss that, that's something you could just give us a call, Andrea or myself, even Red, we'll, we'll definitely we'll go over it with you. You know, say, do you, do you really want to put this claim in? Um, sometimes, like I say, sometimes it's better just to pay the claim yourself. It's gonna, it's gonna be, you know, five, six, seven hundred dollars out of your pocket. Just, just, just pay it yeah. yourself. And that's what your agent's for. Yeah. And like Veronica just jumped in. Hi, Veronica. <laughs> <laughs> so let's go on. So we're running a little longer than we thought. We're, we gotta jump into number okay. five here. Okay. This is for you, Marianne. Okay. No water backup coverage. Um, first of all, this is not a standard coverage on a homeowner's policy. This is a coverage that has to be purchased. So you have to purchase as an optional coverage. It is very inexpensive. It, you, it starts out at a minimum of $5,000 and it can go up to $50,000 worth of coverage. Um, it basically pays for water damage resulting from backup of drains, sewers, or sump pumps. Um, so again, you think that you're not going to be able to ha you know, have this coverage, but this is one of our most common most frequently claims people call in for and again it's substantial damage um, and this is something that you really want to be, be careful of because again like I said it's very inexpensive coverage and it's something that happens more frequently than you think I mean it could be as simplistic as your sump pump just breaks you don't even realize it again you can have coverage for that as well um, let's see the other issue on that is um, Again, as everybody knows with water, one of the first things that happens with water is mold. So being in the basement, and if you've got water in your basement, one of the first things we want to prevent is having mold. We don't want you to be able um, to, to get mold, mold, so we want to prevent that from happening. Um, so we want you to start drying out your basement as soon as possible. Um, you can call a restoration company, such as like Surf Pro, for instance, have them come out, pump out the water, they'll start cleaning out. 
um, your basement area. They'll start drying it up and stuff like that. Insurance companies love that. They want to make sure that happens because you're preventing any future damage. So um, yeah, we always recommend the professionals because yeah. they know what they're doing. They're going to come in. They're yeah. going to get it done quickly for you. Uh, and they're going to know basically how to dry it out properly to prevent those mold issues. Yeah. So, and the thing with them is they're expensive, expensive. but they do a great job, yeah. but $5,000 doesn't usually get you very far. So we always recommend if you have a finished basement, especially if you have a finished, coverage. yeah, especially if you have a finished basement, you need to buy the additional coverage and it is very inexpensive to buy the additional coverage. So again, starts at 5,000, goes up to 50,000. And that's something you should really con consider thinking about because again, that's an optional coverage. We always discuss it when you when you call our office. So again, something to think about as well. Number six. All right. <laughs> so number six, one of the things that you're doing wrong with your insurance is not having another insurance agent or company review your policies. So if you're one of these people who has had the same insurance for 20 plus years, no one's ever looked at it, the company or agent you're with now yeah. has never reviewed it with you, called you, asked you any additional questions, sent you any letters requesting any additional information, it's a good idea to have somebody else look at that. Sure. Insurance policies change. change. So there's new endorsements available, there's new and better policies available, um, and you just might find that by not reviewing your coverage, you might not have thought to call your insurance agency or company and let them know about changes in your life to your home or whatever. So right. example, if you put an addition on, if you finished a basement, right. so if you put a pool in, mm -hmm. those are all things that are going to affect your insurance. So your building cost or your yes. liability coverage, you want to make sure at the time of the claim that you are covered properly. Nobody likes paying for insurance, right. but when it's there for you in a major claim, people love it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so you want to make sure that you're probably covered. When you call somebody new, they're going to ask you all these new questions that are going to trigger this, you know, for you. Like, oh yeah, I did finish off my basement. Um, you know, I guess I never did tell my insurance, my current insurance company for it. And it's one of those things like, you know, even if you don't go with the person or company that you called to get a second opinion on, you can still take those things that those that ideas that, that, that learn, triggered absolutely. for you, that learn, and yeah. take it back to your current company and say, "Hey, you know, I I never called you when I finished off my basement 20 years ago. Yeah. <laughs> can we update my replacement costs in my home so if something ever happens, yeah. I have coverage for it? Because yeah. um, those are big things that people want to make sure that you have coverage for. Again, we were just talking about your basement. Again, you got water and sewer backup. Uh, in your basement again you may only have the five thousand you refinish your basement and now you want to get thirty thousand dollars worth of coverage again you want to make sure that that is being reviewed all the time exactly yep and endorsements i mean there's endorsements that are coming out all, all the time, time. <laughs> and, and there are some very good endorsements mm -hmm. that are very inexpensive yeah. so you want to make sure that you review you know you want to get the best bang for your buck when you're shopping for insurance mm -hmm. you know it's that balancing act of how much premium are you willing to pay versus how much risk that you're willing to take on your own and how much coverage you want, you know? Yeah. Um, and you might find that after being with the same company for 20 plus years, maybe your insurance premiums are just out of whack, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. You just renew year after year after year after year, mm -hmm. you know? You might find that there's a big savings to be had out and there. And other things, I know insurance companies have, they always are going to increase your dwelling coverage because again, the cost of construction always goes up, but sometimes it gets out of whack. So you could have, I'm going to use me as an example, you have a very small little ranch and all of a sudden you're insured for $300,000. I don't think to rebuild my little ranch, my 1,100 square foot ranch is going to cost $300,000. So those are things that you also need to look at as well. Mm -hmm. Again, they sometimes can get out of whack. So you want to make sure that's up to you as, as the policy holder to, to review that, to make sure that that information is, is accurate. Exactly. So let's jump into number, number seven here now. Oh, this is you. Okay. Not listing your children on your auto policy. Welcome to Parenthood 101. Um, and I know nobody who wants to pay more for auto insurance. Who wants to pay more for insurance? Nobody. Especially for a young driver. And yes, again, it, I would always call me how much is going to go up. I don't know. Give me some information. But again, that, that, that happens all the time. Um, it is, New York State does require you to add a young driver to your policy. 
um, as soon as they get their driver's license. Now, Traveler's Insurance Company is one of the companies that do require um, the young driver to be added when they get their permit. So they're going to start uh, using that um, once they get their permit. Yeah. So you always want to check with your company whether yeah. you need to add it starting as their permit or starting with their right. license. There's other companies that do as well require it if the, once they get their permit as, as well. Um, and again, trust me, insurance companies can always find out if there's young drivers in the household. They, they, they do it all the time. There's definitely different kind of reports. They know exactly your young, your young driver is, is of a certain age, where their address is. Trust me, they know how to get hold of you. So they can find out if you do have a young driver or if all of a sudden you don't add them to your policy and they go out and have an accident. What's going to end up happening is, number one, they could possibly cancel you. Um, they could um, start charging you the higher premium and they could also backdate your policy from the time that your um, young driver got their driver's license and or permit. So they can also um, start charging you backdated um, coverage on that too as well. We've seen that and those yes, are yeah. big bills. Bills, yeah. And, Expensive. And, and nobody's happy about that. Trust me, you, you're definitely not happy about that. Um, the other thing is um, it, it helps your child get insurance in the future. Uh, perfect example, again, I'm a parent, so welcome to parenthood again. Um, I had two young boys, I had to add them onto my insurance. They were two years apart. Premium is extremely high. But once my boys are now older in their mid 20s, they've both gone off on their own with insurance, and they've had and their insurance premiums are really very extremely reasonable because they've had prior insurance, number one, and it opens more doors to different kind of companies knowing that they've had insurance since they were licensed. Um, and I guess what is it like? You, there's more. It opens more doors to insurance companies and more opportunities and more options for different insurance companies. So you're going to be able to, um, they were qualified, they, they qualified for every single solitary insurance company out there because they, they've had their insurance. Um, they were prior insured for, for so long. So it's a nice step up you can it, give to your kids. Kid, it, it really is. It, it, and again, I know I've been in insurance for, for, you know, 15, 20 years, but again, it really wasn't. And I, I'm actually seeing that personally myself, my sons, their, their insurance rates are extremely reasonable. Mm -hmm. Um, and again, that is that is definitely one of the reasons. So, um, also when you when you add a young driver, your costs go up. So a couple ways of keeping the costs down is um, having your young driver take a defensive driving course. Um, you can take those online now. They're very easy. We have a link that we can send you. It's cost you thirty five, maybe forty dollars um, to take the course. The discount is good for three years. Um, and again, the discount is up to ten percent. Huge savings there, huge savings there. Um, yeah, we're talking 10% on a youthful driver, driver rate. It's yeah. a lot bigger difference than yeah. just your regular standard rate, so yep. it makes it worthwhile. Yep, yep. You get that payback well, well in the first year. Oh my year. gosh, yeah, for sure, for sure, for sure. Um, some companies do, do do give an additional discount for driver training, and that was what you consider driver's ed. So driver training and taking defensive driving course are two completely different discounts, two completely different um, things that you would have to do. And then there's also the good student discount. Again, if your if your child um, has a you know B average or better, a lot of insurance companies give discounts for being a good student as well. So that's another option that you have to keep keeping your costs down as well for your once you add your child onto you. Um, insurance policy so something you should definitely highly consider right so I, we are like well over the time we had estimated i guess we should have made it like three or four things you're doing wrong on insurance but yeah. we're going to wrap this up here and i'm going to do a quick summary right so the seven things you're probably doing wrong with the insurance home and auto insurance not with the same company husband and wife having two separate auto policies, not listing your spouse on your home or auto insurance, carrying too low of a deductible, not having water backup coverage, not having another agent or company review your policies, not listing your children on your auto insurance. So those are the seven top topics that we felt were kind of highest priority for us that we see most often. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. Um, I, I hope this works for us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I hope it works for you. you guys, yeah. uh, so I hope you find this information helpful. Remember, if you have any topics, put them in the comments. 
We'll add oh, them yeah. to our list. We'll push them up, you know, in priority if we see a lot of people talking about it. Um, and and any, give us your feedback, please. Yeah. We'd love to have we'd any love to hear positive feedback. comments you have. Yeah. Yeah. We love to hear. It keeps us interested. So awesome. Thanks, you guys. Have a great day. Great day. Yep. Bye bye.